Show your support. Join the discussion in the comments. Hello, I am That British Guy and welcome back to another booking video. This time we will be looking at booking the return of Sasha Banks to weekly television. Now I'm sure you're aware she has not been around since WrestleMania where her and her tag team partner Bailey lost the women's tag team titles to the Iconics. Apparently there were issues between herself and management about broken promises, things like that. She has then kind of gone off on a, kind of an extended leave and nobody really knows what's going on with her. It was rumoured that she might be coming back at Extreme Rules to help Bailey out in her match against Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross, especially as there were strong rumours of Bailey needing a friend to help her out, but that never happened. Bailey just won the match and kind of moved on to a new program. There have been plenty of incidents on like Instagram and Twitter as well of Sasha going and visiting various other wrestlers at other companies, especially over in Japan. There has been kind of a lot of talk of potentially her trying to get out of her contract and maybe going over there or to AEW, but at the moment we have got no idea what is going on with her. And if I were WWE, she's got at least another year, 18 months, I believe, the speculation is on her contract. Surely it would be a good thing to kind of try and bring her in and at least use a huge star like that on your show, especially with SmackDown moving over to Fox very, very soon and both Fox and the USA Network really kind of hammering the door down for increased ratings. And let's be honest, the women's division has kind of gone since WrestleMania. And I'm not saying that Sasha Banks would just come in and magically fix all of that, but it certainly wouldn't hurt to have her included in the mix. So here is what I propose we do. We start from the Smackdown after Extreme Rules and Ember Moon was due to have a tag team match against Fire and Desire and Bailey was brought out as her surprise partner. We keep with that, that works perfectly fine, but during the match Fire and Desire managed to isolate Ember Moon and basically take her out at ringside. They can kind of then go off and carry on having their little mini feud rather than get themselves mixed up in the title picture. So as it is, Bailey is basically in the middle of yet another handicap match. And we get to the point where she has just kind of got to make a hot tag to somebody. But obviously there is no one there. And that is when Sasha Banks does return and runs down to the ring, gets up on the apron, Bailey tags her in. I know we're kind of playing fast and loose with the rules here, but no one's really going to care. It's Sasha Banks returning to in-ring action and returning to weekly programming. She gets in, clears house and manages to win for essentially her and Bailey. Ember Moon is kind of taken away. You don't really see that. That's kind of uh, happens off screen effectively. And as Bailey and Sasha are kind of celebrating, hugging in the ring, Bailey is kind of then gesticulating to the crowd with the belt. She is effectively what we're going to do here is what we saw when Seth Rollins broke up from the shield where those guys step forward and leave him behind to attack from behind. That's what we get here. She steps slightly forward from Sasha Banks who then hits the backstabber on her and locks her in the bank statement until she is tapping out. Sasha Banks kind of looks down at her, is kind of mouthing off at Bailey in the ring and leaves Bailey on the floor, broken effectively. The following week on SmackDown, Bailey comes out to the ring and she basically demands that Sasha Banks comes out to the ring and explains her actions, really, explains where the hell she's been, what the hell's been going on with her, what that attack was last night, everything and Sasha does not come out. 
So Bailey, in kind of getting herself more and more frustrated, goes out to the back area and she sees Sasha Banks. And as she kind of goes charging towards her, Bailey gets completely blindsided and attacked. Basically, this other person is going to be Sasha Banks' hench person. And it doesn't really matter who they are. I guess if you kind of want to throw back maybe towards Team Bad back in the day, it could be someone like Tamina. Again, she's quite an imposing figure. They have history. Tamina's not doing anything else because obviously Nia Jax is out with injury. So maybe we could work her into this. If not her, it doesn't really matter who this other person is. But effectively, Sasha Banks has to kind of be the leader of this. She is, after all, the legit boss. Let's actually make her the boss of something. And she's got this heavy to help beat down Bailey, And they just kind of leave her in the corridor and make their way out. The next week, Sasha Banks does make her way out to ringside. And she does explain with her Tamina there or whoever it is she does explain herself and her actions and she explains to the world that it was her that won her and Bailey the tag team belts at Elimination Chamber she pretty much single-handedly destroyed Fire and Desire at the end and had to lock in the bank statement in a kind of improvised fashion because she was so injured while Bailey was just basically knocked out and of no use to her. It was her that managed to inflict Ronda Rousey's first loss in a tag team match with Bailey against Natalia on Raw. She got that win for the team and it was Bailey that lost the belts at WrestleMania to the Iconics. And as soon as that happens, Bailey moves over to SmackDown and completely forgets about that history and wanting to get the belts back and kind of fighting as a team still. She is in the Money in the Bank ladder match. She wins the briefcase and immediately wins the SmackDown Live belt completely focused in on herself without a care for Sasha Banks or the tag belts or any of that kind of side of things and because of this Bailey makes her way out to the ring basically to try and get some revenge she manages to kind of beat down on let's just say Tamina and keep with Tamina for the purpose of argument but Sasha Banks manages to kind of escape unharmed for now and then the next week, the go-home show for SummerSlam, Sasha Banks and Tamina have a match against the Iconics. It is a non-title match. And Tamina is effectively doing all of the work here, beating down on the Iconics. And I know we're beating down on the Tag Team Champions, but at the moment they're not even managing to make it onto television. They're not in a proper feud or storyline or anything. So, yeah, we are kind of burying them a bit, but they're not really doing anything else with them at the moment anyway, so screw it. And just as Tamina has basically got the match won, Sasha Banks demands that she gets tagged in. She's done literally nothing in this match up until this point. She locks the bank statement in and manages to get the submission victory. She then gets on the mic and says to Bailey, look, that is how you win a tag team match as a team. We were dominant over the tag team champions, unlike you at WrestleMania, because you are a quitter. And I will prove that to the world at SummerSlam. I want to challenge you for the SmackDown Live women's title in a submission match to show that you are a quitter. Bailey makes her way out and accepts the challenge and has kind of wisened up a little bit from the week before. She doesn't try and attack. She knows that Tamina is there and kind of fresh. So she just accepts the match and promises to make Sasha Banks eat her words. And that is how that segment kind of ends for the week. We get to SummerSlam and we have the submission match and... It's Sasha Banks and Bailey, so of course it is a very, very good match. 
and at the end Sasha manages to lock the bank statement in on Bailey but Bailey will not tap and Banks is kind of wrenching it in tighter and tighter and tighter and instead of tapping out and quitting uh. Sasha Banks effectively passes out in the hold think Stone Cold Steve Austin at Wrestlemania 13 but without the blood so Sasha Banks does win and does win the title, but Bailey does kind of keep to her word. She doesn't quit. She just passes out with the pain. And this is kind of all we see of Sasha Banks for a while. She ends up kind of no showing the next couple of weeks, even though she is being called out. And the women's division is obviously getting very frustrated with this. And that's kind of led by Bailey. But obviously everybody else in the locker room is getting irritated as well. There is another pay-per-view coming up. Are they going to get a shot at this belt that is not there? And after a couple of weeks, what we see kind of bleeding through on social media. And that gets put onto WWE.com and the YouTube channel and weekly television as well is kind of snippets of matches that Sasha Banks is having all over the world. Now, we're kind of breaking beyond the realms of what is arguably possible, but it's not completely impossible, because WWE do have plenty of ties with companies like Evolve and Progress and ICW and NOAA, although obviously they are a male organisation, but places like stardom and things like that. So Sasha Banks kind of gets these wins over these other people in these other companies and other situations, effectively defending the belt, but not on weekly television. Her reasoning for this is the fact that she kind of went away for a reason. She was sick of how things were run over there, how people were treated. She effectively wanted to kind of stick it to the authority figures and the executives at WWE. But she also wanted to get one over on Bailey. And now that she's got her belt, she is able to do that. And obviously the officials are getting more and more irate with this. We get kind of statements and things from people like Triple H and Stephanie McMahon. Not necessarily seeing them on weekly television for... God knows we don't need that, but statements and maybe short kind of little uh, video packages that are then played on weekly television. And you can play these on Raw as well just to kind of really get over the fact that Sasha Banks is disrespecting the company and the women in the locker room and the belt to a certain extent by not showing up for work and seemingly kind of acting on her own here. And it is declared that effectively she is not competing because she's not competing in WWE matches in a WWE arena. She will have to forfeit her belt when this gets to the 30 day time limit. She will have effectively had this belt for 30 days and not been an active member of the WWE roster. And it just so happens that after SummerSlam, the 30th day is the go-home Smackdown Live before Hell in a Cell. And she does make a miraculous return, just to keep hold of her belt. And it is announced that she will face Bailey in a Hell in a Cell match for the Smackdown Live women's title at the Hell in a Cell pay-per-view. And it's effectively a Hell in a Cell match Yes, it's the Hell in a Cell pay-per-view, but it is a Hell in a Cell match, A, to keep Tamina out, although, as we know, that never, ever works, and B, to kind of stop Sasha Banks kind of taking a count-out or a DQ loss and just running away with the belt again, and also to allow Bailey to get a measure of revenge, and they have match. Tamina will get involved in some way. There'll be some part of the structure that manages to break or she'll pass a weapon through or something like that. And Sasha Banks manages to just about eke out a win and retain the belt. And with that, she disappears into the ether again. But wise to this, WWE are like, hang on, no, 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 no. We're not doing this again. We're not calling you back every 30 days. 
just for you to kind of come back one time to keep hold of your belt. That is not happening. What we are going to have on the first Smackdown Live on Fox, which will be at the beginning of October, so only a couple of weeks after this, we will have a Battle Royal to declare a new Women's Champion for Smackdown Live. We're not having this, you disappear off and never coming back. So they've effectively stripped Sasha Banks of the belt. And on that first SmackDown Live, that is how we kind of open the show. We have a battle royal. We have the new belt there, kind of on a stand, ready to be won. And just as the kind of last people have made it into the ring, Sasha Banks's music hits and she walks out with her belt still. So we've got two belts now effectively and she basically declares that this whole thing is BS and is given an ultimatum by Vince McMahon. I know we don't really want him too heavily involved in storylines but it's the first Smackdown Live on Fox so give them a little bit extra shall we say. He declares look if you enter yourself into this match you can win the belt that we stripped from you or you cannot enter yourself in this match and you will no longer be the SmackDown Live Women's Champion. Your choice. So, reluctantly, she does involve herself in the match and Tamina as well. Tamina effectively tries to protect her till we get down to the kind of end couple of people. However, instead of having her win here and kind of keep on this charade, she gets eliminated whilst trying to eliminate Bailey. They effectively eliminate each other. And the winner is Charlotte Flair. And everybody groans, I'm sure, watching this. I know, Charlotte Flair with the belt again, but it's been a while, let's be fair. And I'm sure Fox are going to want a huge star holding kind of belts and being involved in title pictures. So... It makes sense for now, for the next few months at least, not even necessarily as long as WrestleMania, but maybe until the Royal Rumble, something like that. We have Charlotte Flair have the belt. She can then have feuds with various other people on the roster for the belt, and we can carry on with Sasha Banks and Bayley away from the belt. So we actually get two women's feuds on SmackDown Live. Wouldn't that be novel? And this ultimately leads to a five-on-five five traditional Survivor Series match between Sasha Banks' team of Healy people and Bailey's team of Facey people. Instead of having the tired old SmackDown vs. Raw all over again, we can have Raw and SmackDown people on both teams. Haven't got an issue with that. You're probably going to have to as well because of roster depth. And ultimately here we can have Bailey kind of pick up the win. Maybe having kind of two or three of her team manage to finally knock off Sasha Banks after she has to kind of hold on for the longest time on her own as she's kind of losing people around her. We can kind of have it that the face team are kind of more in solidarity because of trying to get revenge over what Sasha has done, especially the kind of women on the SmackDown side of things. The fact that she kind of just went off with the belt and left their division kind of in tatters. And on the heel side of things, it can all get kind of very, very selfish and me, me, me. And especially if we take Tamina out of the running fairly early on with kind of three four on one tactics to eliminate her Sasha is left without any friends they don't overly kind of care about her cause against Bailey as much leaving her on her own to kind of lose at the end this would bring Sasha Banks back in a huge shocking way it elevates her straight to the top of the card on SmackDown Live immediately. But it also gets her doing something very different, something that nobody else in the company is doing. It also helps WWE kind of shore up some of these relationships that they are trying to build with other companies, especially if they're going to do what they did with the Evolve 10th Anniversary Show and bring some of these other shows onto the network 
There are rumours that there is uh, an ICW show already planned for the network, but at the moment it's kind of locked and people can't see it. But apparently some people have kind of managed to see screenshots of it, something like that. So it's clear that they're trying to kind of develop these ties with other indie companies throughout the world. So to have one of their kind of big stars and one of their title holders moving from company to company that only brings eyes of the kind of not necessarily the most casual of fans but those that haven't really kind of experienced those other companies as much it gives them a reason to kind of check out progress or wxw in germany or icw or evolve or things like that it gives them a reason to oh what's what's sasha banks doing over there then what what who's that she's facing for the smackdown live women's title on their kind of pay-per-view type show i don't mean that to be disrespectful i just mean in terms of like it's a big show for them but it's it's obviously not a wwe style pay-per-view but it brings eyes to those companies and ultimately, yes, she does get her comeuppance at the end here. But she is a heel. They are kind of meant to get their comeuppance at the end. She's still got Tamina by her side. Maybe she kind of then goes on a tirade against other baby faces on that team and gets a bit of her heat back. So there we are. That is how I would bring Sasha Banks back to WWE's weekly television by kind of effectively not bringing her back. But... You get my point. Let me know what you think about it in the comments below. If you have any other thoughts or ideas of maybe what she should do going forward, whether that be with WWE or with another company altogether, please let me know in the comments. You can also follow me on Twitter at Rightly Wrongly and find me on Facebook at That British Guy 86. But until next time, I have been That British Guy and I will see you very soon. Goodbye.